Hey everyone, are you ready for another deep dive? We're tackling some seriously interesting research today. You know how we always hear about obesity and chronic disease? Well, get this, we're gonna be looking at some research that might just challenge some of those common assumptions. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're taking a closer look at the work of Dr. Robert Lustig. He's a leading expert when it comes to sugar and metabolic health. I have heard of him. He was actually guest speaker for the Emory Pharma series. Oh, wow. And his insights, well, let's just say they're pretty mind-blowing. Well, I'm definitely intrigued. What's so mind-blowing about his work? Well, what's really cool about Dr. Lustig's research is he's connecting those rising chronic disease rates to something you might not expect. Hmm. Okay, I'm listening. What is it? What's going on at the cellular level? Interesting. Okay, so what is happening in our cells that's driving this whole health crisis? Well, it all starts with this crazy statistic that Dr. Lustig highlights. 60%, 60 of normal weight people have the same diseases as obese people. So it's not just about the number on the scale. Well, hold on. So you're saying you can be thin and still be metabolically unhealthy. Exactly. It's not just about the fat you see, but the fat you don't see. The hindu fat. It's the fat inside your body, especially around your liver, that's the real troublemaker. So even if you look healthy on the outside, you could be a tuify. Turidify. Thin on the outside, fat on the inside. Oh, gosh. Okay, that's kind of scary. It is. And what is that hidden fat? What does it actually do? Well, think about your liver. It's your body's detox center. Right. Working hard to filter out all the junk we put in our bodies. But when it gets overloaded with fat, it can't function properly. Yeah. And that's when you start seeing problems like fatty liver disease. And that's becoming increasingly common, right? Even in young people. Yeah, you're right. One of the sources you sent actually mentioned your concern about fatty liver disease. Is that what we're talking about here? Yeah. This NFLD thing? <laughs> yeah. NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And it's actually now the leading cause of liver transplants in the U.S. And like you said, it's not just an adult problem either. A quarter of all children, 25%, are showing signs of fatty liver disease. Wow, that's alarming. And you're saying it's not just about being overweight. It's about this hidden fat and what it's doing to our organs. Exactly. But what's causing all this fat buildup in the first place? That's where Dr. Lustig's research gets really interesting. He's identified eight cellular processes that go haywire in chronic diseases. AD. He calls them the hateful eight. Okay, the hateful eight. Huh, sounds intense. So what are these hateful eights, and how do they connect to this whole fatty liver situation? Well, think of your cells as tiny factories. They need to function smoothly for your body to thrive. But these eight processes disrupt that smooth operation. Two of the big ones are mitochondrial dysfunction and insulin resistance. Okay, break those down for me. What do those even mean? Sure, so mitochondria are like the powerhouses of your cells. They're responsible for converting food into energy. When they're not working right, your body struggles to burn fat efficiently, and that can lead to fat accumulation, especially in the liver. So it's not just about how many calories you consume, but how well your cells are actually using those calories for energy. Precisely. Got it. And then there's insulin resistance. Okay. Insulin is a hormone that helps your cells absorb glucose from your bloodstream. Okay. But when you constantly bombard your body with sugar, you know, like we tend to do these days, Yeah, your cells become less responsive to insulin. It's like they get tired of hearing the same message over and over again. So they just tune it out. Yeah, pretty much. And when your cells become resistant to insulin, what happens then? Well, your pancreas has to pump out even more insulin to get the job done, and this can lead to all sorts of problems. Like? Including, you guessed it, fatty liver disease. It's a vicious cycle. Mm. So we've got these messed up cellular processes, hidden fat buildup, and a liver that's struggling to keep up. Yeah. I'm starting to see the connection here, but what's the main culprit behind all of this? What's throwing our cells out of whack? It's sugar. And not just any sugar, but a specific type called fructose. Fructose, okay, I know it's in fruit, but I thought fruit was good for you. It is, fruit in its whole form is fine. The fiber in the fruit helps to slow down that absorption of the fructose. The problem is the added fructose that is lurking in so many processed foods and sugary drinks. So it's not the naturally occurring sugars in whole foods that are the issue. It's the added sugars, particularly fructose, that are messing with our cells. Exactly. Over the last 200 years, our consumption of sugar has absolutely skyrocketed, and that increase correlates directly with the rise in chronic diseases. Wow.
Yeah. And you mentioned those hateful eight processes. What does fructose actually do to our cells? It disrupts several of them, but let's focus on the two that we were just discussing. Mm -hmm. Mitochondrial dysfunction and insulin resistance. So remember how the mitochondria are the powerhouses of our cells responsible for burning fat for energy? Right. Well, fructose actually inhibits those enzymes that help our mitochondria do their job. So it's like fructose is sabotaging our cells' ability to burn fat? Yes. It's not just about the calories in the fructose, it's about how it directly impacts our metabolism at the cellular level. And when your cells can't burn fat efficiently, guess where that fat ends up? In my liver. Yeah. Leading to fatty liver disease. You got it. And remember insulin resistance. Uh. Fructose plays a huge role there too. When you consume a lot of fructose, it overwhelms your liver and your liver starts converting that fructose into fat. That fat then gets stored in your liver and it also gets released into your bloodstream, which contributes to insulin resistance. So fructose is kind of a double whammy. It messes with our ability to burn fat and drives insulin resistance, both of which contribute to fatty liver disease. Precisely. It's a recipe for metabolic disaster. Okay. I'm starting to see the bigger picture here. But let's be real, sugar is everywhere. It's in almost every processed food on the market. What are we supposed to do? You're right. It's definitely a tricky situation. The modern food environment is basically saturated with sugar. Dr. Lustig actually points to processed food as the main delivery system for all this added sugar, especially fructose. And it's designed to be addictive. Addictive. Really? Like... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Processed foods are engineered to be hyper palatable. That means they hit all those pleasure centers in our brain. You know, that combination of sugar, salt, and fat, it's irresistible to most people. So we're fighting an uphill battle here. Our biology is wired to crave these surely processed foods, and they're everywhere we look. It's a real challenge for sure. But one of the key takeaways from Dr. Lustig's work is that knowledge is power. Once you understand how these foods are affecting your body at the cellular level, you can start to make more informed choices. Okay, but what about exercise? Can't we just burn off those extra calories and negate the effects of a sugary diet? I wish it were that simple. Unfortunately, exercise, while incredibly beneficial for overall health, doesn't completely counteract the damage that's done by a poor diet. Remember those hateful eight cellular processes? Yeah. Well, four of them are not affected by exercise at all. You can't outrun a bad diet. So even if I hit the gym regularly, I can't just eat whatever I want. That's the hard truth. Exercise is essential for overall health, but it can't undo the damage done by a diet that's constantly bombarding your cells with sugar. All right, so we've established that sugar is bad news, especially fructose, and that exercise can't fully compensate for a poor diet. But what about those artificial sweeteners? Aren't they a healthier alternative? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. Unfortunately, artificial sweeteners aren't really the magic bullet a lot of people hope for. Oh, really? I thought they were supposed to be calorie free and you know better for you than sugar. What's the catch? Well, they might be lower in calories, but they still have some negative effects on your body. Remember when we were talking about gut health? Yeah. Well, artificial sweeteners can actually disrupt your gut bacteria and that can lead to inflammation and it can even make it harder for your body to regulate blood sugar. So even though they don't contain sugar, Artificial sweeteners can still mess with your metabolism. Exactly. Plus, they sort of trick your body into thinking it's getting sugar, which can then trigger an insulin response. Oh, wow. So even though there's no actual sugar to deal with, your body's still releasing insulin, which, again, can contribute to those pesky, hateful eight processes we were talking about earlier. Wow. So artificial sweeteners are kind of a sneaky villain. They seem all innocent, but there's still causing trouble behind the scenes. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. It all comes back to being mindful of what you're putting into your body. Yeah. We need to be really critical consumers and not just, you know, accept everything the food industry tells us. Okay, so if sugar is bad and artificial sweeteners aren't that much better, what are we supposed to do? Okay. Is there any hope for our poor sugar-bombarded cells? There absolutely is. Dr. Lustig really emphasizes that real whole foods are the key to combating these issues. So we're talking fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, the kind of foods our bodies were really designed to thrive on. So basically, ditch the processed junk and go back to the basics. Yeah, pretty much. And remember, it's not just about what you eat, but how you eat, too. Eating mindfully, slowing down, really savoring your food can all help you feel more satisfied and prevent overeating. Makes sense. If you're just rushing through a meal, your body doesn't even have time to register that it's full. Right. 
And don't underestimate the power of fiber. Oh, yeah. It's your gut's best friend. Fiber helps slow down the absorption of sugar, which helps prevent those spikes in blood sugar and insulin that contribute to so many health problems. So load up on those fruits, veggies, and whole grains. Got it. This is all starting to feel a lot more manageable. That's great. This has been an incredible deep dive. We've gone from hidden fat to the hateful eight, to the evils of fructose and the importance of gut health. It's amazing how much we've unpacked just from Dr. Lustig's talk and the sources you shared. It has been a pleasure exploring all of this with you. And remember, knowledge is power. Now that you understand the science behind these issues, you can make informed choices that empower you to take control of your health. Well said. And remember, if good food is medicine, what are you prescribing for yourself today? Choose wisely and keep those cells happy and healthy.